If you have troubles thinking of qubit states as vectors, or if you're in general more a visual thinker, then the block sphere is probably a great tool for helping you understand the basics of quantum computing. We can represent quantum states, quantum gates, and quantum measurements using the block sphere tool. So hopefully after this video, these concepts will feel much more intuitive to you. The north and the south pole of the sphere correspond to the zero and the one state. And on the x-axis are the x eigenstates, plus and minus. And on the y-axis are the eigenstates of y. The qubit is then represented as a vector from the origin to an arbitrary point on the sphere. The reason why we can use the block sphere for visualizing a qubit has everything to do with the Born rule. The, the idea is that you can write any pure qubit state as a superposition of the zero and the one state. So psi is alpha zero plus beta one, where the coefficients alpha and beta define the probability that the state is in the zero or in the one state. The coefficients satisfy the rule that the absolute value of alpha plus the absolute value of beta should be one because of the total probability rule. So we can see that every pure state vector psi has exactly length one. And this is the reason why we can represent any qubit on a unity sphere, aka the block sphere. One reason why the block sphere is such a useful tool is because it's easy to visualize gate operations on a qubit. Gates are represented as rotations on the block sphere. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have the qubit state zero and we want to perform an X gate. The X gate is also called the bit flip gate. It brings the zero state to the one state. And on the block sphere, the X gate is equivalent to a rotation of pi around the X axis. The other Pauli gates work in a similar way. So the Y gate is a pi rotation around the Y axis and the Z gate is a pi rotation around the Z axis. Another gate that is often used in quantum information is the Hadamard gate. On the block sphere, the Hadamard gate is a pi rotation around an axis right in between the X and the Z axis. It brings the zero state to the maximal superposition state plus, and it brings the one state to the minus state. The Hadamard is equivalent to a pi over two rotation over the Y axis and a pi rotation around the Z axis. If we do a measurement on a qubit in a certain basis, its wave function will collapse to one of the basis states with a probability given by the Born rule. We can make this more intuitive by looking at an example on the block sphere. So if we have the state psi is one over square root three cat zero plus square root two thirds one, and if we measure in the Z basis, we will observe the state either completely in the zero state with probability one third or completely in the one state with probability two thirds. We can see that the measurement in a certain basis projects the qubit state onto one of its eigenstates. And that's why the direct measurement of a qubit is also called a projective measurement.